What we have on the background is Finnish winter in January's end 2019. What a depressive season. Well, then again, it might be just lots of light, lots of snow. What we have here, however, is a special guest in Finland, something from Washington State, United States of America, Wolves in the Throne Room. Now, that's a peculiar name, not only for its music, but it, because of its so many facets, you know, there's lots of stuff going on. So, welcome. Nice to have you here in Finland. How are things going with you? Uh, things are good. Things are good. We've just been here for about 12 hours or so. Uh, and it's been a it's been a lovely visit so far. We came in on the ferry from Stockholm. Um, it's cold. We're sitting in the snow. It's very nice. So what what is your name again, and what do, what do you play? Uh, my name is Nathan, and I play guitar and um, do the vocals in the band. You have you're also the other original member. Am I right? Yes. Uh, me and my brother Aaron are the are the are the original members, and now Cody is a. Uh, Is a is a is a core member with us as of the the last album Thrice Woven. You have had a few lineup changes regarding the so-called third member. What is the case with this? Yeah, I guess I guess we have. Um, well, the band has mostly always just been Aaron and I, uh, the drummer, um, and uh, yeah, I guess we've kind of had a revolving door of people over the years. The band's been a band since around 2002 2003 um we did our first demo in 2004 and yeah i guess we've had two other main guitar players over the years um well i should turn that off are you gonna edit this out we like the ambience <laughs> you like the song i like the song that's playing um Yeah, so we've had two other uh, guitar players before Cody is co the core third member, for sure. I promise to the audience, well, that is to myself and the camera person, that we're gonna start with the question, why red wine instead of, I don't know, beer and whatnot? So what is the story oh, with red wine? Why do we all drink red wine on tour? I don't know, that's just what we prefer. I guess, um, you know, when I was younger, I, I loved to go to Germany and... And you know Holland didn't drink all the beer, and I, I loved it then. But now, if I do five weeks drinking beer, I just I don't feel well after the end of the tour. Um, and that's kind of the case for all of us. I guess we've all switched to drinking. I've become more of a wino in my old age, wine connoisseur, I suppose. I love the taste of beer, but I don't know how bands drink a six pack of beer every night at the shows for six, five, six weeks. Do you think it has something to do with aging? Perhaps, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess we've been drinking wine instead of beer for a while, but um, I definitely couldn't go back. Uh, maybe it's a young man's thing. Although, we do tour with bands who are in their 40s and 50s and 60s, and they're all drinking beer, but I just prefer I prefer wine. We actually mix uh, sparkling water with the wine sometimes. So there, have a tip for you youngsters. It keeps you hydrated, you know, so you can just drink wine all night, and then it's, I don't know what this is called. Doesn't really matter what it's called. That's a good. De uh, being hydrated is better than dehydrated. But now let's go to the history of the band. Like you said, you have been out there from since 2002. You uh, quite soon became kind of a underground uh, name that everybody just had to check out. I remember first time when I read about was you probably around 2005. You being the uh, 12 Diadems album. I think it was Sudan. Diadem, uh, Diadem of 12. Diadem stars. Of the, okay. Yeah. Thank you for oh, correcting it's okay. me. That's okay. Um, so back then it was like noticed a underground uh, name that hasn't hasn't been there before. And suddenly this new blooming act was there. And all of a sudden people were starting like looking for, uh, you know, background information or like what is this United States American band playing black metal? It's not the type of uh, USBM that was more satanic, but this was nature-oriented band. Now, let's talk about nature and uh, your origins. What came, uh, I mean, like, what was going on when you had this idea, let's play some non-satanic black metal? Can I call it that? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say our style is non-satanic black metal. Um, I would describe our sound as atmospheric black metal or... Cascadian black metal. Um, 
I mean, we definitely aren't the first black metal band to be exploring all the, you know, the themes of nature and worship of nature and, and you know, more you know, spiritual um, themes like that. I mean, I feel like a lot of bands were doing that in the 90s. A lot of Norwegian black metal bands um, had, you know, had th that kind of message in their music. Um, it was interesting when we first, you know, were playing and, you know, we were getting a lot of attention as a band. I think a lot of the U.S. press just, you know, label us as this band who invented this whole concept of, like, natural, naturalistic black metal. And I just think that they're misinformed. I think a lot of bands were already doing that. Um, uh, you know, Oliver, Burzum, you know, a lot of the bands, Emperor, were focusing on those sorts of themes. And I don't know, I just feel like journalists then, they just, they didn't really know about black metal and uh, doom metal and funeral doom. They just didn't know about that stuff in America, the journalists especially in 2002, 2003. Um, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm glad that I think the, the press, especially in America now, is a lot more educated in the history of, of underground metal, you know. Now that you mentioned this Cascadian black metal, uh, it's often been used by bands who are about this kind of a mountain view things, forests, lakes, and whatnot, yeah. of especially Northern America or uh, lower, I mean, Southern parts of Canada. And myself, I've been al always, uh, not always, but often used the word green metal to kind of make this distinction between the bands that are more, say, nature related in their topics and uh, lyrical sides yeah. as opposed to uh, these black metal sides. What do you think? Is this kind of uh, distinction necessary or is it just yet another useless word to try to put different kind of bands and styles into boxes? Um, do I feel that is the question, do I feel the term green metal applies? Or? Yeah, do you think it's totally wrong or do you think it applies to you at some sort? And uh, do you and the other Cascadian black metal bands? Uh, I don't think it applies in a lot of ways. I think, like I said, I think, you know, journalism and press at the time in 2003, 2004, 2005, they didn't really know what to make of it. Um, and also, this was a time where black metal became really popular in underground publications and kind of, you know, younger people going to shows who had never even, they probably didn't even know like a name of a Slayer record were going to metal shows back then because for whatever reason, black metal became this like, you know, popular, cool thing. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like um, the term green metal and organic black metal and these sorts of terms, um, it, it just sort of arose out of being sort of misinformed about the history of the genre, I think. Um, and also, you know, our band isn't, the term green metal for me, um, or organic black metal, or, um, it really references some sort of like environmentalist uh, stance or message behind the music, and our music has never had an environmentalist stance per se. Um, I mean, we have all of, you know, we as members have our own opinions about uh, politics and these sorts of things, but it was, it's never, I mean, I guess to be clear, Wolves has never been like a, a political band, you know, like we've, we're not like Rage Against the Machine with like a political message behind our music. Yet some, so many people, uh, at least this happened in Finland, I don't know if so much about other countries, but in, at least in Finland, so many underground talks had that no, you cannot listen to that stuff. It's so much communistic stuff. It's so much on the left. What do you have to tell about these kind of accusations? Are they totally false or is there any truth to them or does it even matter? Um, is there truth to American black metal bands? I mean like being communistic or left wing or whatever. Uh, commu communistic, commu like uh, communism. No, I don't, I don't know anyone who's... who's uh, yeah, interested in communist politics. Um, and I don't know, I feel like the black metal scene in the Pacific Northwest, where I live, in the U.S., um, it was just very non-political. I feel like a lot of the people who were involved were into, you know, political things when they were in teenagers or in their early 20s. But uh, the bands that have formed in that area, um, you know, as far as connecting with black metal was very like beyond politics. 
for for a lot of us and maybe all of us. I don't have you know contact with everybody in the Pacific Northwest who have started black metal bands, but. But I mean, you especially were mentioned, maybe because you were kind of like originators of Cascade and Black Metal. Yeah. You were labeled, and I don't know, to be honest, for what reason, but it seems that there was this kind of rumor circulating that now that you're uh, about nature and stuff, you yeah. must be all hippies and stuff, and maybe those got it, the ideas, but they're totally false, it seems. Yeah, I mean, I think in early interviews and, um, you know, uh, when the band first started, I feel like there was a very clear ideology put forth by Aaron when he was doing interviews. And yeah, I mean, like we have been hippies of sorts <laughs> for lack of a better word. I mean, growing up um, in the underground scenes we're in, it might look like freaky hippie weirdos to people in Europe who don't quite understand the West Coast scene of America. Totally you know? different. Um, and so I think maybe some parallels were, were drawn by in those early days between us and hippies <laughs> uh, just out of ignorance of West Coast American culture in the 90s and the early 2000s. So basically people were not educated enough about the kind of a modern um, American black metal scene. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't say that in a negative way per se. I mean, how, uh, yeah, I mean, how could they have been? I mean, you know, Germany and Poland and Austria are very far away from Washington State, and we just, you know, me, me and my peers, we just had like a very kind of strange thing going on that might not translate uh, perfectly to just a soundbite or a slogan or a headline and on some webzine. I think it might have been a little hard to understand, but yeah, I mean, definitely the bands in the in our area and Wolves in the Throne Room has definitely been. Um, The themes have definitely centered around nature, and it has been informed to some degree by, you know, uh, anti-civilization, uh, environmentalist activism. It's been informed by that stuff, but our band has not been like a political, a political band with, with political messages behind the music. If that makes sense. So, are you a rural countryside band? Uh, I would say that Wolves is is somewhat of a rural band. Yeah, I mean. The town we live in is is pretty small, and we live kind of on the outskirts, and we've always lived on the outskirts of town. And um, yeah, I mean the local scene is consists of 50 or 100 people. The people who like metal in my town, maybe 30, 40, 50 people really like metal and go to the shows there. So it's a very small, it's a small, uh, small town in America for sure. In in the terms of we uh, as Europeans getting the view of American uh, mindset and you know uh, how people live is usually based on of course movies and in based on movies what we have uh, of the United States countryside or small towns is usually lots of uh, pickups redneckish people having kind of a conservative thoughts and like. You don't believe belong here, kind of mentality. And yeah. of course, we have Twin Peaks from the 1990s. Sure. How much that yeah. is <laughs> related to your kind of, uh, say, uh, living atmosphere or space where you go and people? Uh, yeah, it's funny you bring up Twin Peaks. Um, I feel like I was asked this in the last interview. Um, I love Twin Peaks. I love David Lynch. I think he's a genius. I'm a big fan, obviously. Um, and I feel like he really did. David Lynch, when he created the Twin Peaks, you know, program in the early '90s or late '80s, um, he did really nail the the bizarreness of the Pacific Northwest, like in the United States. Small diners and stuff. Yeah, small diners and um, yeah, definitely logging trucks driving through town and um, you know, rural people who are very right wing uh, living amongst you know weird poor artist musicians. All kind of in Olympia, it's very much a melting pot between. You know the rural, the people who live outside of town in the rural areas, and then the people who live in town who are mostly musicians and artists who are hanging out in the downtown of Olympia. Um, and also, just the uh, back to Twin Peaks, I, I do feel like Lynch nailed the the bizarre darkness of the area, um, the rain and the um, just the forests there are, are very. They're like no other forest I've been to, and they have an eerie um, vibe to them, for sure. 
Alice in Chains, the famous grunge band from Seattle, oh, yeah. uh, did actually an album about the fog that is surrounding the areas around Seattle. Did and uh, yeah, and, and about the kind of a mystic feeling about that. Do you think it's kind of a labeling uh, in terms of, you know, creating a certain kind of atmosphere aside, you know, with the mountains and stuff, or is it just random thing? Um, I think bands from the area definitely have have a have a vibe to them. I think um, the grunge bands, especially the darker ones like Alice in Chains um, and Soundgarden to some degree, um, I really hear the Northwest in that music. And I remember when we first did our first two albums, Diadem and Two Hunters, uh, I was listening back to the records after we were in the studio and I was listening to the basic tracks and I was like, oh, this sounds almost grunge to me. So <laughs> very anti-Californian in a sense. Yeah, I mean, California definitely has its own energy, which I love. Um, but yeah, our music, Alice in Chains, I think there's, some, there's something in common there. It has this dark, misty quality to it. And obviously Wolves doesn't sound like Alice in Chains, but... Obviously. Um, but still kind of the same vibe in terms of... Yeah, and I was, I've always been a fan of Alice in Chains, and you know, I grew up listening to them. They played just right down the street from my house when I was in uh, m middle school. And I didn't get to go. I was probably 12 or 13. And oh, if I had been 14, I probably would have gone, but I was just too young to see them, and Nirvana and Soundgarden, these bands all played just right around my area, you know? I did get to see Nirvana, um, but after they were already famous, they played a big, um, like, arena show, you know. So you basically mi missed the underground uh, time. I, I missed the underground of the local uh, grunge music scene by about a year or two. Um, but I got to see a lot of bands that were still, you know, like Nirvana got so famous and Soundgarden and Alice in Chains, they just blew up. Um, and they were playing stadiums by the time I could go to shows regularly. But I got to see bands like the Melvins um, a bunch of times in small clubs, all ages shows, uh, you know, get drunk and watch the Melvins at a small place was really, was really cool. What did inspire you to create such a long, such a long uh, track length you're doing? I mean, many Cascadian bands, after you have done the same, creating these eight minute, 12 minute tracks, you are so famous for, I mean, you have a, Basically, all the albums you have like ten plus, sometimes shorter, of course, yeah. but also very lengthy tracks. What is the thing behind this? I don't know. I mean, that's just what that's just what we went for right off the bat. We were we would always want to do long songs. Um, I guess because we wanted our band to have a very specific atmosphere to it, and we didn't feel like a you know five minute song structure would create enough of a journey um, throughout the song for the listener to really... I mean, originally the band was really meant for people to listen to in their bedrooms alone or in the forest uh, with headphones. Um, it wasn't originally meant to play, you know, these shows with Behemoth and At The Gates. This, this, was, this wasn't our original intention for the first record, especially. Um, and it's changed over time. Um, but yeah, the the first three or four records we were definitely going for the long song approach because it was more of a journey for the listener and um we want people to really get get deep into the to the story of the song and be able to go on an, an adventure with the song opposed to just kind of a, a metal ripper you can head headbang to and it's over which i love those kinds of songs but that wasn't our original plan and uh yeah i mean and also a lot of our a lot of the bands that we really admired had long songs. Um, our early influences, like um, you know, Pink Floyd, obviously, for the time, had very long songs. Um, uh, Neurosis, uh, Weakling, um, and you know, a lot of the black metal bands that we were listening to in the '90s. To us, the song seemed infinitely long because we were used to, you know, a Slayer-length song or. A, or a Morbid Angel song, you know, which were shorter than an Emperor song or an Over song, you know. What lies ahead in Wolves' near future? Well, uh, we've been touring um, kind of nonstop for Thrice Woven 
which is the album we released in, almost two years ago, I think. I have to fact check that Something one. How like long? That. I don't even know. Uh, and um, this is our last tour. We're touring with At the Gates and Behemoth, and we did the same tour in the U.S. for five weeks, and we're doing that version of the tour in Europe for five weeks. And after this, we're completely done touring until we write a new record. Back to the woods. Back to the woods to write a record, yes. You never planned to uh, become a kind of a rock star, kind of a touring band, but, but here you ended. Um, have your feelings changed about let's go to the cabin and tr record an album to a let's go to the tour and drink some wine kind of a band? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's changed that much. Um, we've always wanted to tour. We always have toured. Um, and that was one thing when the band first formed that was, I think, unusual for us is that we were actually on tour for six, seven, twelve weeks at a time. And a lot of black metal bands at that time weren't doing that. So, yeah, we've always toured. Um, and I don't know. I look at the band as two... two two directions we tour and then we write and those are the and we're fortunate enough to just be able to do this band as our as our job you know um so we can we can write and then tour and then write and then tour and both things are you know very fulfilling and i enjoy both equally thank you for very much of these words of wisdom sure. now it's time for the last one what would be your uh, words of wisdom to the audience whether they are you know trying to find out their band of their own or just for the listening metalhead the word is yours feel free to express words of wisdom words of wisdom okay let me have to think about that um, thinking I guess I mean my only I don't know I don't like to give advice or preach to anybody about anything I think people should just think what they want to think I'm not trying to change anybody's mind um, about their beliefs in this band. We're not a preaching band, you know? Um, but one thing I'm inspired by just in the metal scene is just how eclectic it is and how many different kinds of bands there are. And I just think that's a really good thing that there's so many different kinds of metal bands. And I think there's a tendency in the metal community to you know, think that it's gotta be one way to be a heavy metal band or a black metal band or a thrash metal band. And I, I've been very inspired in the last a um, few years especially where metal's gotten so big that there just seems like that there's room for all genres and I think that's that's an inspiring thing and I hope it keeps going that direction thank you very much for your time it's yeah. time for a handshake all right. and as always the final words think for yourself don't put yourself into these boxes get inspired and explore right on I like that that was good right on See ya. Thank you very much. Now it's cold. Let's get inside. It is cold.